As the Dean, I would like to give you an idea of what we do and more importantly, how we do it. Whether we're teaching, learning, doing research or interacting with the world at large. And we are proud to say we do it the UP way. This means living and working as ethical, socially and environmentally conscious individuals who are focused on making a positive impact on society. We get excited when lives are changed for the better. Doing things the UP way is all about enabling and inspiring our students to put their values into practice throughout their careers. Successful healthcare practitioners combine academic excellence with kindness, empathy, respect and tolerance. We teach, learn, innovate, impact and live the UP way. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mani Bikanyo, Head of Marketing and Communications at the Faculty of Health Sciences. Now, before we kickstart the program, I'd like to welcome our panel for the day, Deputy Dean of Teaching and Learning, Professor Vanessa Stienkamp, and the Manager of the Undergraduate Student Administration, Ms. Celissa Anthony. Thank you so much for joining our live stream. During this session, we'll give you more information about our schools of medicine and dentistry. We also have a welcoming address by the one and only Dean of the Faculty, Prof. Tian Deyaha. I know that many of you have burning questions, so towards the end of the session, there will be a Q&A discussion. To those of you on Facebook, make sure to post your questions in the comment section, and those watching on YouTube, you can post your questions on the live chat. There are also amazing giveaways for those of you participating in the chat and comment sections. We will be handing out giveaways for, from Chris, which is our health sciences cafeteria. And of course, you always need study material. So we are offering a bookmark voucher valued at 500 Rand. We also have a tax student gym membership for three months, which is up for grabs so that you can stay healthy and achieve your summer body goals. To engage with us during the show, please connect with us on our social media platforms. It is as easy as going to hsup.co.za. Make sure to bookmark it and get up to date with our news and current events at the faculty. You'll find all of our social media handles where you can connect with us. So make sure you use two of the correct hashtags, which is hashtag life changes and hashtag HSUP. 
So be sure to connect with us right now. At the University of Pretoria's Faculty of Health Sciences, we like to focus on potential. The potential of our students to make a positive difference to the world around them. The potential to produce research that shifts boundaries. The potential to heal, to relieve, to recover and restore. Discover your potential and join the movement. Follow the University of Pretoria's Faculty of Health Sciences on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn to be a life changer. So here we are, we already have some of your tweets coming in. And here's one by Tristan Wiggle. He says that he is super excited for the Faculty of Health Sciences live stream. And we are super excited to engage with you, so stay tuned. And without further ado, it is with great privilege to introduce the tallest dean at the University of Pretoria. Prof Tiandeyaha, over to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Tian de Jager, Dean at the Faculty of Health Sciences, and welcome to this live stream event hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences as part of hashtag Choose UP initiative. Why should you choose to study at UP's Faculty of Health Sciences? Our faculty, situated on Prince of Campus, has a reputation for producing excellent healthcare professionals, changing lives globally. We are creative and innovative and as you have seen during the crisis times like Feast Must Fall and now specifically during the COVID pandemic, our students successfully graduate on time. We are continuously transforming. Transformation of the curriculum, facilities and the culture in the faculty are important in addition to racial diversity. This keeps us relevant and competitive. With 43 departments across four schools, our faculty offers one of the most diverse range of programs for you to choose from. You can follow a career based on your passion within the School of Medicine, the School of Dentistry, School of Healthcare Sciences and the Postgraduate School of Health Systems and Public Health. This session is focusing specifically on MBCHB or medicine and DCHD or dentistry. Places for these programs are limited and it is very competitive. During the next session, we will tell you more about other programs to be considered like human nutrition, physiotherapy, radiography, occupational therapy and nursing sciences. Taking all these programs into consideration, the faculty maintains an average module pass rate of around 95%. Your success is important to us. We have academic and mental health systems and support in place, and our leading hybrid learning approach will ensure that you can continue achieving success the UP way. In addition, we are well-renowned for our vibrant student life and the culture surrounding it. We want you to develop to your full potential in a safe and stimulating environment. Our staff are dedicated leaders in their respective fields and are passionate life changers. By using our advanced infrastructure, laboratories, libraries, and leading research facilities, students in the Faculty of Health Sciences develop essential skills and gain reputable experience. At institutional level, UP ranked number one in South Africa and Africa on the UniRank Global Ranking System for universities. On the QS Global Ranking, we are within the top 1% globally for clinical medicine, immunology, and microbiology. And with the Times Higher Education ranking, we are the only South African university that ranked for Sustainable Development Goal 3, that is health and well-being, and are amongst the top 200 globally. 
We hope you will choose UP and join the Faculty of Health Sciences and become a life changer too. Enjoy the program and I trust that we will be answer, able to answer all your questions. Thank you so much, Prof. I am sure our prospective students are so excited to be joining the Life Changes. Now, as mentioned, we'd love for you to engage with us online, so please remember to leave your comments and your questions for our Q&A session later on. Now, we're having some interesting comments that's pulling up from our social media. Andrew says, Health science looks like a blast. Hoping to join Olympus Res in 2021. We'll meet you next year, Andrew. Franz Mashishi says, Health sciences at Tux. I want to be a life changer and I will be joining you in 2021. And we hope to meet you too, Franz, in 2021. And we've got Pranilla Hara. Thank you for the event, guys. I had so many questions that are being answered right now. I cannot wait for 2021. Hashtag life changes, hashtag HSUP. So please keep engaging with us because you might just be a winner. Now, our YouTube channel is a library of information where you can access various playlists, gain insights into the amazing projects that the faculty is involved in. We are often asked by prospective students about the possibilities of transferring to a dentistry or medicine program later on. So if you've been wondering how that is possible, just watch the video. Are you pursuing a career in medicine or dentistry, but weren't admitted with the first intake of students? There is an alternative route. You can now register for a degree in the BSc Biological Science cluster. Some of the undergraduate degrees in this cluster include Biochemistry, Biotechnology, Ecology, Entomology, Genetics, Human Genetics, Human Physiology, Human Physiology, Genetics and Psychology, Medical Sciences, microbiology, plant sciences, and zoology. One of the benefits of this route is that your time to complete your degree in medicine or dentistry will not be extended. However, due to limited space and the stringent screening processes, it must be noted that admission is competitive and we cannot guarantee that your application will be successful. Start off by successfully completing the first semester modules. Part of your registered modules must include chemistry, physics, molecular and cell biology, science in worldviews, people and their environment, as well as medical terminology. If you are selected, the modules that you've passed in the first semester will be credited, which will allow you to continue with the curriculum for a degree in medicine or dentistry. To be considered for this route, you need to have matriculated with an overall APS of 35 and a minimum of 70% for mathematics. It is also critical that you have not been registered at a university before. For more information on specialising in a specific career in the BSc field, contact the Faculty of Natural and Agricultural Sciences. Our School of Medicine is one of the most innovative schools in the country, providing our students with a wide array of opportunities. We would like to introduce Professor Soma from the School of Medicine to share more information about the programs on offer. The quality of teaching and learning at UP School of Medicine continually produces top-class researchers and medical practitioners. Many of our graduates become top doctors and researchers in the country highly sought after because of their skill set. We blend clinical training with modern cutting-edge teaching and learning practices. We house exceptional lecturers with a passion for their work. A specially tailored curriculum allows our students to join the ranks among international players. We cover a comprehensive scope of study comprising 29 departments. Our students go beyond their call of duty to overcome mediocrity and rise to excellence as they benefit from theory in classrooms to practical experience in community hospitals and clinics. 
fighting poverty-related diseases, promoting good health and well-being. We prevent loss of life. The School of Medicine at UP's Faculty of Health Sciences, leaving an impact and changing lives. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Faculty of Health Sciences, for me, the best university in the world. I am a proud part of this institution since 1997, when I joined the Steve Biko Academic Hospital as a medical officer, where I cared for patients and also did some clinical training for our students. In 2003, I joined the university as a full-time lecturer. So it's actually great. I don't like to brag about it, but I actually get paid for talking. Today, I am the head of the Department of Anatomy, the department where students are able to hold hearts that once beat more steps than we've ever walked on the earth, where they will be able to hold onto lungs that once breathed air into it. I think there is no better time than now than to study medicine. And as a South African citizen, I'm grateful that we have been able to flatten the COVID-19 curve and continue to do so. What the new technology Artificial intelligence, what an exciting time to study medicine. Imagine what kind of doctors are we going to produce now. Being a doctor gives you a unique opportunity. You need to be a global citizen. We need to be active, attack social injustice, and hopefully one day we'll be able to correct health disparities in our country. In our faculty, we have four different schools. I am representing the School of Medicine. So if you want to study MBCHP, you will be part of the School of Medicine. We also have a School of Dentistry, School of Healthcare Sciences. Those are the people who want to do nursing, occupational therapy or physiotherapy. Then final school we have is a School of Health Systems and Public Health. We are producing many postgraduates, especially from our School of Health Systems and Public Health. So if you want to become a doctor, you need to enroll for the MBCHB degree. Should you have aspirations to become a specialist, once you complete your MBCHB, you will then enroll for an MMED within our, within our courses, and you can specialize in many different specialities. And I will highlight some of our specialities. So six years sounds like a long time. Trust me, you'll be having so much of fun the six years. You will pray you want it to be longer at UP. So as mentioned previously, the first six months, you will be at the Hatfield campus. You join our Prince of Campus in July of the first year. Many of the times will still be spent with lecturing and formal teaching. There is a little bit of introduction to clinical medicines and some exposure to LCAS. In your second and third year, we will do the basic sciences. You will be visiting my department for anatomy, where will you be dissecting the cadavers, doing some histology, learning some pathology, learning microbiology. In your third year, you will be learning and teaching lots of more subjects, basic sciences. Finally, in your fourth year, you get to feel like a medical doctor. Students love spinning their stethoscopes around and it gives me so much of pride to see our students enjoying their stethoscopes. So in fourth year, you'll be visiting the hospitals and start your clinical rotations. What do we mean by rotation? It's the different subjects and disciplines you will be learning to become a fully trained general practitioner. Your fifth year, most of the days are spent in the wards. There are some formal lectures in the afternoon, but again, you'll be start caring for patients, taking histories and examining. Once you reach your sixth year, we call you an SIC, as you will practically be running the hospital side to side with our consultants and registrars. At the end of your sixth year, you'll graduate, and that will be followed by a two year internship. Thereafter, there's a year of compulsory community service. The year of community service provides important, important services, especially in our country. But remember, you will be earning a full salary. So it's not six years where you are a poor student. In fact, when I started working as an intern, I used to earn 600 Rand for the six months. And I was chuffed with the 600 Rand that I got. I could even send home, money home to my family. 
I won't say how much money you'll be earning now, but trust me, it's much more than 600 rand. If you want to become a GP like me and you are happy treating families, but if you are not, the sky is the limit. You could decide to go and specialize in pediatrics. What is pediatrics? It's where we look after the little children. So up to the age of 12 is where the pediatric patients will be looked after. Should you be interested in female health, you can become a gynecologist. Should you want to become a physician or an internist, you'll specialize in internal medicine. Or if you want to operate, especially on the abdomen, you can become a general surgeon. We always need a anesthetist. Remember, it's those people that make you sleep in theater so you do not feel anything. How do you become a specialist? Once you graduate with your MBCHP, you complete your internship and community service, you enroll at the university where you become a registrar and you enroll for an MMED. The MMED will depend on which discipline you would like to specialize in. So, should you want to become a cardiologist? What's a cardiologist? Cardiologist is the one you will usually go and see if you are having chest pain or if you are having an irregular heartbeat. Cardiologist does not perform any surgery, so there's not much cutting involved. These are the doctors that will make you run on a treadmill. They are the ones who will be able to put in a coronary stent should there be a blockage in one of your blood vessels. Cardiologists are experts in treating people with high blood pressure or what we call hypertension. Radiologists are specialized specialists who deal in interpreting all investigations like a chest x-ray, like a CT scan, like an MRI. Again, you will study MBCHB and do four years special radiology degree. Or you could be a general practitioner and there's a big shortage of general practitioners in the community. Remember, patients love doctors who do house calls and I think there's a huge shortage of general practitioners in our community. But wow, what an amazing profession to be a neurosurgeon where you will be operating on the brain. And we have a huge department by us run by a new head of department. Many exciting things taking place there. Unfortunately, death is an important part of our careers. And so should you want to investigate what was the cause of death, you could always specialize and become a forensic pathologist where the organs are looked at, blood is analyzed. Lastly, should you really be interested in doing surgery? So surgery is different. General surgeon usually will operate on the abdomen. A thoracic surgeon are those people that operate on the heart and lungs. If you have a peptic ulcer, you would probably have to go and see a general surgeon. If you have a growth in your colon, then the general surgeon is the person to go and see. Many other specialities will include neurology, thoracic surgery, or you could become an ENT surgeon, ear, nose and throat surgeon. If lungs are the things that fascinate you, then pulmonology is what we should go and study. Special medicine regarding related to the eyes, you will study ophthalmology. And there are many more. I've just mentioned some important ones, and I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Prof. Soma. I'm sure our future doctors are now equipped with the correct information about the School of Medicine. Now, if you love Instagram and you're all about the drip, you can always follow us and get a glimpse into some of the projects that we are involved in and find out more about our up and coming events. And now talking about social media, we're going to jump straight into some of your comments. Now, Nelly Baloyi says, I am starting to be a dentist in 2021. Please make sure you pick me. I want to join Health Sciences. Come on, girl. We know you applied, so we might just see you next year. 
Sarah says this virtual event is so amazing, very informative. I am excited to start my student journey at the faculty. We're also excited to have you join us, Sarah. And Kay, super excited to join the health sciences family. I mean, life changes are always looking forward to new members of the family. Remember to use the hashtag so we can see your comments and questions. It's hashtag HSUP and hashtag life changes. Now, since some of you have been busy tweeting away and engaging us in our Facebook comment section as well as YouTube, as promised, we have a winner. The Chris voucher with 500 Rand goes to Tibalo Ramakoma. Congratulations. Please make sure to open up your details and open up your DMs. We will be sure to contact you with further details about how you can get your prize. Now, without further ado, our next presentation is by Professor Shangase, who will be talking about the School of Dentistry. I am a dentist. Each day I treat patients who need me to give them something to smile about. I give my patients and my community a healthy body and lifestyle by restoring their oral health and function, free from pain and with great looks. As a dentist, I'm a member of a team whose multidisciplinary approach improves the total health of our patients. The team consists of me and dentists who have chosen one of the six fields of specialization. We all play our part in managing and restoring the oral health of our patients. Each patient that I see is unique. I hear their concerns, examine them with care, diagnose their problem and create an individualized oral health solution to manage their specific oral health needs. As part of UP's Faculty of Health Sciences, the School of Dentistry aims to produce diverse and competent dentists. We improve the quality of life of our patients and of the community by training our graduates in the state-of-the-art facilities in order to thrive in an ever-changing healthcare environment. Apply for the course Dentistry at UP. Become a life changer because great smiles, changed lives and the quality of life go hand in hand. Good morning. My name is Londi Shangase. I am the chair of the School of Dentistry at the University of Pretoria, and I'm also the CEO of the University of Pretoria Oral Health Center. Thank you for tuning in this morning to this live stream. Let me take this opportunity to take you through the School of Dentistry and possibly try and convince you as to why you should choose the School of Dentistry at UP should you decide to want to do dentistry. But I'm also going to convince you as to why it is that Dentistry and oral hygiene are the best professions in the health sector. The School of Dentistry operates from the Oral and Dental Hospital on the, on the Prince of South campus of the University of Pretoria. We share these premises with our other sister departments who actually make input into the program as service departments like anatomy, physiology, microbiology, and pathology. The facility provides a teaching and training platform for dentists, oral hygienists, and dental specialists. Not only do we provide this service platform, but we also provide it for the patients and also make sure that the research platform also is used for the students and staff. So why should you choose dentistry? The number of oral health care providers in South Africa is not near where it's supposed to be. Therefore, we still are in great need of the oral health care practitioners. Oral health care practitioners play a very important role in the management of the health of the community in South Africa and abroad. So it's important that we try and recruit as many young individuals with a banning in, of taking care of the patients out there in our communities. So, as a dentist or as an oral hygienist, you are an integral part of the health system. You will contribute to the prevention and management of chronic conditions. But also there are specific conditions that occur in the mouth conditions like oral cancer, which is a big topic in this era, because it's a silent killer. So join us in this profession to make sure that we fight the scourge of oral cancer 
and the cancer in general and improve the quality of lives of our community. Our school prides itself in the, in the values that underscore the operations in the school. I'm just gonna go through a few values that we hold up high in the school that informs how we do things within the school. Excellence is one of the values that we hold close to our hearts. We reach this by making sure that we recruit the high quality staff with a keen interest in teaching and imparting the knowledge, not only in the classroom platform, but also on the clinical platform. And these high quality staff also make strides to ensure that within their busy schedules, they do research and not just research by high impact research. And the staff that we have really are passionate about what they do. They are committed to the profession. They put the student interest first. Secondly, we also have the state of the art facility and equipment. It's important for us to make sure that we keep up with the trends internationally to ensure that our students are exposed to the real and good quality equipment and the facility. All our programs in the school are accredited by the statutory body, the HPCSA. As we shifted gears with the introduction of the COVID-19, we had to move on the online teaching platform. We took strides to make sure that our teaching staff are online teaching platform ready. So the upskilling is very important in our school to make sure that our staff deliver to the highest standards on the teaching platform. The second value is inclusivity. We aim to ensure that every student feels like they belong to the school. Every student needs to make sure, needs to know for sure and for certain that their lives matter. So it is for this reason that as we shifted gears to the online platform, we made sure that each and every student had access to the online platform. This we did by making sure that they, they each have devices, access to devices at least, and they also have data so they can have connectivity. We further make sure that students feel part of the school by making sure that we engage with them and we make sure that they take part in the decision-making process in the school. So they sit in committees in the school so that they can share their views and their opinions because those two matter. The third value is that of playing a supportive role. It's good to recruit students from the different uh, streams, whether you're from a disadvantaged background or you're from a good background. But once you've been recruited to the institution, it becomes imperative that you receive the support that you need. So our high ranking teaching staff make sure that they are readily accessible for students for either inquiries relating to the academic material or for debriefing sessions following a clinical session just to make sure that students have really grasped what they were supposed to be doing in the clinic. And further to that, they, there is also a psychologist that is based in-house two days in a week. And this is the person really that makes sure that students are taken care of, you know, in life, you do come across uh, situations where you feel you've been dealt a lot of lemons. So your psychologist then will try and assist you and remind you as to how to actually take those lemon and make lemonade. So it's one thing that we really pride ourselves to make sure that our students are fully supported. COVID-19 has changed the platform to a certain degree. So you might be wondering whether you will be safe on the platform as a student at UP in the School of Dentistry. Because remember, dentistry is said to be a high risk environment for transmission of COVID-19. We have really taken extra, extra strides to make sure that our students, staff and patients feel safe in the environment and not only feel safe, but are actually safe. So we've changed the platform 
to suit the purpose. We've got social distancing marks. We have made sure that there's sufficient equipment to protect our students and staff. And we have actually made sure that for every student that walks into our building, they've been prepared and trained to ensure that they follow the protocols to prevent transmission of disease. All this support, the inclusivity, and the excellence of our staff is merely ways for us to make sure that all our students graduate on time, regardless. Fairness is one other value. We aim to make sure that every student is treated the same and every student has got access to the platform at the same rate and the equal treatment for one and all. So you are rest assured that when you join UP School of Dance History, you will be no different from the student next to you, regardless of race, religion, creed, or any other variable that you might be presenting with. Transparency on the platform is very important. So all our students are engaged right at the beginning, at, right at the beginning so they know what it is that is expected of them and what it is that they need to do in order for them to make the cut. And also to promote transparency, students are involved in the committees so that they participate in discussions that involve their lives as students so that nothing is done behind closed doors. So, you are at the stage of your life where you need to make an important decision regarding your future and your career choices. I urge you to join the School of Dance History at UP. We are life changers. Come on, join the team of life changers as we change your lives for the better. And together with you, we can change more lives, one at a time. Come, let's do this. Choose UP. We're going to do it the UP way, and we're going to change lives for the better. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, Prof Shangase. We can safely say that we now understand the importance of oral hygiene and the culture at the School of Dentistry. Now, for those of you who are already accessing LinkedIn and updating your resumes so that you can remain current, please make sure you follow us on this following handle. Now, we love to stay engaged with everybody from our prospective students to our alumni and the general public. Now, very soon, we'll be discussing some of the questions that have been coming in through our comment sections. But for now, we are going to announce another winner. I hope you're ready. So the winner of the book mug voucher valued at 500 Rand is Carol Malaka. Congratulations. As with the previous winner, you'll receive a notification with all the details about how you can collect your prize. So I'm sure you've been eagerly awaiting to finally get some of your burning questions answered by Prof. Vanessa Stienkam and Ms. Anthony. So we, it's time for like our Q&A session, and we're going to kick it off with the first question directed to Celissa. Uh, Ms. Anthony, which marks are used for the selection in 2021? Morning, Mani, and thank you for having me. So for provisional selection, we consider uh, matriculants based on their final grade 11 promotion marks. But they just need to uh, remember that in order for them to retain the selection, the determining factors still remain with the final grade 12 results. Mm -hmm. So learners cannot uh, start resting after they've been selected because they will need to keep up the standard at which they were selected for. Okay, so now Ms. Anthony, Evelyn now has asked a follow-up question as well. Um, and she's asking, will the NBT be used for the selection for 2021? So the university has been um, monitoring the situation over the past few months and after careful consideration 
and also the impact uh, that the pandemic has had on the, uh, uh, the venues. The Faculty of Health Sciences has decided not to use the NBT as part of the selection for the 2021 intake. Mm. So selection will be based purely on the final grade 11 promotion marks. Okay, thank you very much, um, Ms. Anthony, for clarifying that, because that's been a constant question that a lot of the students have. And moving on to the next question by Ndlala. She wants to know what support structures are in place to support her child in the transition from school to university. And I would like to direct that question to our Deputy Dean of Teaching and Learning, Prof. Stienka. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, well, we are very cognitive of um, giving everybody a fair opportunity at the, the faculty, at the university as a whole. And we have got faculty student advisors who are there to support in all the needs and refer our students. We also have mentors that is usually peer students who are a year older that will assist you because they've gone through the course as well. They're in the same course that you are doing. We also have tutors and currently with the pandemic we have online tutoring that is still going forward and we've got very supportive lecturers that also are there to help you. We also have psychologists, so should you need um, mental well-being support in any kind, they are also there to support you. We've got the 24-hour helpline too that is also available for you. And then naturally we've also got the um, senior people as the deanery or that you are welcome to contact and we will assist you where we can with all your queries. Thank you, Prof Stienka. Now back to Ms. Anthony. Um, one of the prospective students, his name is Stephen, would like to know when will he know if he was selected for either a, a qualification in the School of Medicine or a qualification in the School of Dentistry? Thanks. Thank you for that question. So, Marnie, um, our applications closed on the 31st of July. And I must say that um, we've received a little under 11,000 applications from matriculants applying to the Faculty of Health Sciences. So the staff at the university has been working very hard to process all these applications in time for us to uh, make the offer soon. So matric learners should be able to receive feedback on the application by the first week of September. So matriculants can then start tracking the status on their student portals from the first week of September and they will know whether they've been selected or waitlisted. Okay, so Ms. Anthony, following up um, to that question, Agnes would like to find out um, what can she do if she's not selected for an MBCHB qualification or a BCHD qualification? Are there any alternatives? So, um, yes, it, it's naturally that uh, if someone's not selected that they will be disappointed. But I do want to say that they should not be deterred by that because we do offer an alternative option for uh, matriculants who have not been selected straight from matric where they can register for a BSc Biological Science degree in any of the fields and then after the first semester of the first year they can apply to be selected into the second semester. Thank you Ms. Anthony and now back to Prof Stenkamp. Amit wants to know, which is a very crucial um, question that most parents and students have. He wants to know, are we safe or is it safe on campus? Yes, yeah, surely. Safety is one of our biggest um, uh, things that we look at and ensure in our students and even in our staff, but definitely for the students. So we have electronic access to all our um, camp, well, the, the substructures and buildings within our campus. Um, also, we provide um, student cards, so only if you're registered will you have access into campus, and that is your, how, what is used also going into any of the buildings that we do have as well. As I said, there is 24-hour security, and there's also a helpline should you need assistance or safety, so we've got security guards um, on, on, on the campus at all our um, buildings. 
Also, furthermore, we've got parking areas for students and then bus services between our campuses that makes it safe. We've also further got the green route that we ensure that students move across two buildings using the correct route, which is safe for them and is guarded. Okay, so Prof, um, every student always wonders um, in their first year or second year, where are they going to study? Are they on um, campus? Which campus are they on? Whether are they in hospital? So Prof, can you just give us an idea of where the classes take place and on which campus the students will actually be studying or be situated in? Yes, I, I think that is one of the things that the students think they fall right into the hospital immediately. <laughs> um, but that is not the case. The, for, for the medical students studying the MBCHB and our dental students, they will spend the first six months at the Hatfield campus, after which they will move over to the Prince of Campus, which is our medical campus, for further studies. In the healthcare sciences, so that's our physios, our nursing students, dietetics, they will be spending, uh, depending on some of the courses, between Hatfield as well as the Prince of Campus for the first two years. And there, was, there is one module also for the dietetics that is in, um, in the third year that is also just uh, on Hatfield campus, but the rest are then at the Prince of Campus. So they will be situated at the Prince of Campus from then on and join our family um, in proper, but being present with us. So that is basically in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Prof Stenkamp, and thank you, Ms. Anthony, for joining us in this Q&A session. I'm sure everybody's burning questions have been answered. And um, if you need more information regarding application content and academic-related questions, please visit www.up.ac.za. And now we are coming close to the closure of our session. And I think you know what that means. It means that it is time for the last handout for the session, which is the Tax Gym Voucher, which is a three month subscription that allows you to get into your fitness mode as you begin your studies here with us. And the winner of this prize is Abigail Tamba. Thank you so much, your student life. Um, thank you so much, Abigail, for entering and posting your comment. And I think that gives us a close regarding the prizes on offer for this session. Now, we cannot talk to you about things on offer at the Faculty of Health Sciences if we're not going to share a little bit more on student life. Your student life is one of the most exciting times of your life. So let's take a look at what the Health Sciences Faculty has in store for you. Good morning everyone. My name is Sian Damnisi and I'm a fourth year student at the University of Pretoria's prestigious Faculty of Health Science. I've served on several student support and leadership structures within the residences and the faculty throughout my time at the university thus far. And I must say that it is evident that we pride ourselves in ensuring that students not only develop into amazing skilled healthcare workers, but we make sure that they develop into holistic reputable citizens that are able to engage in a variety of discussions and activity after obtaining their degree. This can be illustrated through the faculty's mentorship program, where third year student is allocated about four or five first year students to mentor and guide on how to achieve the perfect balance according to their own study preferences. This also allows you to form relations and, and to engage in conducive social spaces with people in years above you 
those who have walked the path that you are yet to start. We also have access to faculty student advisors that are there to facilitate and guide you through any problems you might have, or even refer you to additional student health support services. The social spaces that are found within our campus would not be possible without a tight security network that allows students to relax and feel safe within the parameters of our university space. Our security boasts itself in being the friendly faces on campus and they are always willing to assist with any security problems that you might come across. Initiatives such as the Green Route can be found throughout campus and in some of the teaching hospitals, assuring that students that their safety is prioritised. This allows them to fully immerse themselves in their academics as they engage in teaching and learning opportunities without having to worry about their safety. Our campus is a peaceful one that has lots of social spaces where students can unwind and relax after an intense lecture or test and we have amazing coffee shops where one can grab a quick coffee just to keep them going for the rest of the day. However, ladies and gentlemen, our main purpose here is to study and obtain our degrees. And it must be said that we take that as our utmost priority. We have a variety of resources, such as an anatomy study resource or museum, that students can utilize fully to improve their knowledge and understanding of their coursework. Libraries both in the Harvey Snayman building and the Basic Medical Sciences building that are equipped with a great selection of books, internet and printing services, and study cubicles for those days on campus that just don't seem to end. Access to online learning materials and e-books via the library's online services make navigating through your degree in our faculty an enjoyable journey. So I encourage you to choose UP and choose the Faculty of Health Sciences, where lives are changed and where dreams get turned into a reality. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you all the best for your upcoming exams and we look forward to welcoming you at the Faculty of Health Sciences in 2021. Stay home, stay safe and thank you.